hear me, guys? Hey. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. It is not recognized in my my headset. Um, Mm. Okay, it seems that it is not recognizing my headset. I can hear you, but I cannot have a um, uh, the computer microphone. Um, thank you, my friends. Um, uh, well, good evening, guys, and thank you very much for joining today. Tell me, how was your vacation? What did you do? Did you visit any places? Um, let me see if I'm able to share with you my screen. So what do you do for these uh, past vacation guys? How was it? How how did it go? Right? Anything interesting? What do you do? Uh-huh. Solo uno, no se hagan duro por los participantes. Only one. Okay. Give me one moment. I'm going to look for the um, for your list. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, welcome. I'm sorry, I... I don't understand because I listening a uh, little but your audio. I know, yo sé, este no me reconoce ni mi jefe. Um, no es. What about now? ¿Y ahora? ¿Cómo se escucha? Se escucha un poquito con eco, teacher. Sí. Uh, What about now? ¿Qué tal ahora, chicos? ¿Cómo se escucha? Creo que ha mejorado un poco. No, siempre sigue con la computadora. Ahora no, no sé por qué no... no me, o sea, yo he conectado mis headsets, pero por algún motivo no los reconoce. Vamos a ver ahora. What about now? Do you see? Hoy sí me parece que ya son mi headset. Sí, creo que sí, teacher. Bueno, I think it's... It will work. Creo que sí va a funcionar. So I'm going to pass the attendance first, and then I'm going to uh, continue with the topic uh, we began last week. Recordemos que esta es la semana 2 de trabajo. Quiere decir que estamos, vamos a trabajar, mejor dicho, la sección 3 y el midterm exam, ¿verdad? Sections 1 and 2, we finished or we completed them. Um, last last Thursday right now we're working in section three already and we're going to complete also the midterm exam okay so let me pass the attendance first and then we're going to move to the um to the class so Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez present teacher thank you uh Ana Cecilia Romero de Dominguez present teacher Thank you. 
Byron Rafael Avelar aquí. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Fernando Portillo Rivas. Present. Thank you. Eh, Carlos Roberto Domínguez. No está Carlos Roberto Domínguez, ok. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Present. Thank you, Cristina. Tamaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Present teacher. Thank you. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Elizabeth del Carmen. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Present teacher. Gracias. Eh, Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Present. Ok, thank you. María Griselda de la Paz Zamora. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Rufino Amílcar Hernández Linares. I am here. Thank you. Sandra Janet Vázquez Cortés. Present teacher. Thank you. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. I'm here. Thank you. And Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina, ¿no está? Ok. Uh, Alguien que se haya unido mientras estaba pasando la asistencia y no escuchó cuando le, le mencioné su nombre o, o dije su nombre. Hi, teacher. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, María Griselda. Ahorita le agrego la asistencia. Thank you okay. very much. Thanks. Nice. You're welcome. Well, guys, uh, thank you very much for joining today. I could see that there is a question related to the platform today in the WhatsApp group. So we're going to check that in just a moment. First, we're going to have here a quick review, right, of what we did last, last week. So we were using past models for degrees of certainty, right? And we divided them into three different parts, right? When uh, we are almost certain, so casi 100% seguros, when we are almost certain, when we consider that is a possibility or that something is possible, and when we know that something it's not possible. We are sure about it. So we divided here three into uh, three different sections, right? And you completed a set of sentences that were well uh, done. So I congratulate you for that. That's what we did last, last week. Okay, now uh, what else? We're going to move on, right? And we're going to uh, go ahead and continue, right, with uh, the different topics that we have in the in the um, in the manual, because not all not not all of the information, you know, it's in the in the platform. Some things are left out, but there are some other activities that we can find here, right? So I'm going to move to this section over here, perspectives, right? perspectives. So it says, listen to three different friends talking to one another on the phone, right? Check, right? Check the response you think it's best for each person's problem. So here we have, you know, three different uh, conversations. The first one is between Michi and Molly. The second one is between Molly and Ramona. And the third one is between Ramona and Michi. So let's go ahead and uh, see. They are, you know, switching back. Están regresando la, 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 la conversación. So take a look in here. We have three different situations and we have different responses. So these responses are made with this structure. Con la que estudiamos la, la clase pasada, the past models for degrees of certainty, right? So let's take a look in here. We're going to begin with the first one. Uh, Michi says, hi, Molly. Ramona's mad because she thinks I didn't ask her to go hiking with us. I sent her four emails, but she never responded. So here we have two different answers, right? 
So the first one says, well, you know, Ramona never answers emails. You should have called her on the phone. Oh, oh, forget it. I wouldn't have sent so many messages. If Ramona can't bother to check her email, she'll just miss out on things. Then in the second situation that we have, it says, Ramona, hi, I just got off the phone with Michi. Um, she asked me for advice, but she never stops talking long enough to listen. Now Ramona gives, I mean, she has two possibilities. You could have been more understanding. Michi must have been upset and just needed to talk. I would have asked Michi to be quiet for a minute. How can you give her advice if she doesn't give you a chance to talk? And the last one, Michi, I can't believe that Molly still has my notes. I needed them for a test today. She never returns things. And Michi says, Molly shouldn't have kept your notes this long, but I wouldn't have lent her, lent them, I'm sorry, to her the week before a test. Oh, Molly may have just forgotten about them. I would have just borrowed someone else's notes. Okay, now in your case, guys, what do you think is the best possibility for situation number one? Right now I am on page number 19 in the manual, okay? So what do you think, first or second response? What would be the best option for you? First or second response, what do you think? Number one. Number one, right? Why? Why do you think, guys, that number one is it is is the best option? What do you think, or why do you think that? Mm, I forget it. How how to say amable? Kind. It's more. It's more kind, Molly. It's kinder. That's true. That's true. Um. I think it was you, Miguel, right? Um, it's true, it's cierto, right? So the first answer is kinder. It's more polite. Es más amable, as we say, right? It's more polite. What about situation number two, guys? What do you think, number one or number two? What is the best response? What do you think it's the best response? One or two? So the first one says, you could have been more understanding. And the second one says, I would have asked Michi to be quiet for a minute. So what do you think sounds more polite? First or second one? Sure, what do you mean um, upset, upset? Upset means kind of decepcionado or molesto. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. If you have questions about the vocabulary words, you can ask, right? O puede usar también lingui, right? For you to, um, for you to check, you know, the words that you don't know, but I will just leave it like that, right? But I think the first one is the best option, right? Because it's the, the best thing to do whenever uh, you feel like that is to be more understanding, right? To understand that people are not like us and that probably the person just had a problem and this person just needed to talk with someone else, right? 
So I'm going to stop there with, <laughs> with that activity, right? And in the meantime, I'm going to move on to the next uh, to the next topic, okay? Which is past models for opinions and advice. Now, uh, remember, uh, recuerde que estamos usando siempre los models, pero acá los estamos usando para, okay, para grados de certeza, de certeza ya sea afirmativa o negativa, algo que es posible o algo que no es posible, right? Pero ya acá we're using a past models to give opinions and to give advice. Ok, entonces siempre vamos a usar los models, pero no de la forma que lo hicimos anteriormente, sino para dar opiniones y consejos. Right. So take a look at the, at the structure here. It says given opinions. Right. You should have called her on the phone or she shouldn't have kept your notes this long. O sea, todas las que vimos acá, estas oraciones que ustedes vieron acá, son las que, tiene, las que tenemos acá como ejemplos, right? Now, if you see, right, then it says giving advice, right? You could have been more understanding, or I would have borrowed someone else's notes, or I wouldn't have lent, her, lent them to her, right? So here, when you give opinion, it's like, um, it, no es de una forma muy directa, de hecho, pues es bastante formal usando should, ¿verdad? No debiste haberle llamado por teléfono, right? Eh, mm, ella no debió haberse quedado con tus notas por tanto tiempo, right? So, we're giving just opinions. Marce, pero estamos usando should y should generalmente lo, lo usamos para dar consejos. No, no siempre, right? Entonces, whenever you give opinions, you can go ahead and uh, do it like that. Por ejemplo, eh, incluso en español nosotros decimos, hey, mira, no debiste haber labrado así a, a ella, ¿verdad? ¿Y por qué? No, porque fíjate que ella tiene una dificultad ahorita, pues sí probablemente se sentía mal. O mira, no debiste haber mandado el reporte sin terminar, ¿verdad? Ahora nos vas a meter en problemas. Entonces, si usted se fija, nosotros incluso en español lo usamos, pero es bien, es bien formal. Tratamos de... De, de no sonar muy pesados, no debiste, ¿verdad? Hey, debiste habernos esperado, ¿verdad? Creo que no fue el momento, nos hubieras preguntado, ¿verdad? Entonces, this is um, a way that you can use to give opinion. And remember that we're using uh, models, past models, ¿verdad? Should have called, debiste haber llamado, shouldn't have kept, no debió, ¿verdad? Haber guardado o tenido, ¿verdad? Now, when we give advice, right, remember that these are past models, right? When we give advice, we can use um, could, could have been, right? Oh, you could have been more understanding, right? Um, that would be could plus have plus past participle, right? Or, you know what? You could have um, helped her. Pudiste haberla ayudado, ¿verdad? Pudiste haber hecho esto, pudiste haber hecho lo otro, right? Eh, I would have borrowed someone else's notes. Yo hubiera prestado, hubiera pedido prestado. I would have borrowed someone else's note. Now, aquí chicos, necesito que recuerden que cada vez que yo agrego would, le doy ese, uh, esa terminación a veces que tenemos en español. Yo hubiera, ¿verdad? Pedido prestado. Yo hubiera eh, llamado. Yo no hubiera dicho nada. Right? So those are some structures side that we can use. Oops, creo que me lastimé acá y hasta ahorita me doy cuenta. Um, so hubiera, right? I would have borrowed someone else's note. I wouldn't have lent them to her. Okay, ahora vamos a armar una estructura. Right, I'm going to close this one. Uh, give me one sec. Let me see. Okay, so the structure is going to be like this, right? We got um, giving opinions, right? Giving opinions. This is que vamos a usar con giving opinions. Vamos a usar should plus have plus past participle. Okay. 
okay. ¿Qué vamos a usar con giving advice? Bueno, con giving advice vamos a usar algo parecido, solo que ya no con should, sino que lo vamos a usar con could, ¿verdad? Vamos a usar could plus have plus past participle o vamos a usar would, ¿verdad? Plus have plus past participle, ¿verdad? Opinions. Ahí está. Entonces, eso es lo que vamos a usar cuando queramos dar opinions o cuando queramos dar consejos, right? So, giving advice, giving opinion, right? So, let's go ahead and share it here with you. Ahí está. Very good. Now, guys, let's go ahead and it says complete the conversation using past models with the verbs given. Then practice with a partner. But right now what we're going to do is to complete them, okay? So you are talking about past models, okay? Vamos a usar las estructuras que ustedes tienen, que yo les acabo de, prestar, de, de pasar ahí en WhatsApp, y las vamos a usar para completar estas oraciones, okay? I'm going to give you some varias, son dos por cada una, two, four, six. I'm going to give you six minutes, okay? Let's take six minutes for you to check them. Van a leerlas y van a usar la estructura que yo les compartí, right? Give me one moment, this is one is six. Okay, comencemos por un ejemplo, ¿verdad? Dice, I invited my boyfriend over to meet my parents, but he arrived wearing torn jeans. Look, torn jeans son los jeans rotos, ¿verdad? Están rotos y pues ahí pues se ve que <laughs> no, no se ve muy formal, ¿verdad? Entonces, um, then he says, he arrived wearing torn jeans. He looked so messy. Messy is disorganized, right? Well, he, ¿ok? Acá voy a dar un consejo. ¿Cómo puedo dar ese consejo? He should, he could, he right. should have. He should right. have. Muy bien. He should have, muy bien. Ah, pues vamos a dar opinion. She, he should have worn, right? Worn. Uh -huh. Usado, debía haber. Ah, no, perdón, dressed, tiene ahí el verbo, perdón. He should have yeah. dressed. Dressed. Uh -huh. Dressed neatly, right? Dressed. Entonces, Eso es lo que ustedes van a hacer. Van a usar la estructura y van a usar el verbo que está entre paréntesis, ¿ok? So I'm going to give you six minutes, ¿ok? Beginning right now for you to complete the sentences. If you have any questions, let me know, ¿ok? Teacher, what is the meaning dented in the second? Mm, dented es cuando le sí. hacen una. Eh, ay, nosotros en español decimos. Uh, abolladura. Abolladura. Thank you so much. That's the word. Okay. Abolladura. Okay. Ajá. Uh -huh. And I was okay. trying to look for it. Sí. Abolladura. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome.
Let me know if you're ready. Okay, so we can make up some of the sentences together. After this exercise, I'm going to check. I'm going to check the one in the platform. Okay, uh, with the one that you have questions. Okay, very good. So let's begin with the first one. So we already did it, right? And we said something like, uh, but, well, he should have dressed, right, neatly. So what about the next one? What do you think will be a possibility for this um, sentence? With the verb ask. How do you use it? ¿Cómo usaron esa ustedes en letter B? I go I to, okay. to wear something nicer. Vaya, ahí por ahí escuché varias respuestas, pero alcancé a escuchar una. I could have asked him, right? Por ahí escuché, I could have asked him to wear something nicer. Ese sí, ¿verdad? Pero queda muy bien, me parece, excelente. Okay, now what about what about the next one? Okay, we have que dice acá Wendy Carolina dice Ah, okay, I'm sorry to hear that, Wendy. Ojalá que, que no le esté fallando tanto. Pero si no entendemos, ¿verdad? Que se esté saliendo y que la saque y que después entre, no se preocupe. La cosa es no, no perder tantos minutos de conexión. Pero gracias por avisar. Okay, so I could have asked him, ¿verdad? It, uh, to wear something nicer, right? Um, what about this one? No, number two, it says, John borrowed my car and dented it. <laughs> when he... Sure. Damn. I have... Um, I am using wool in, in the plot for the exercise. I would have, okay? Wool, I would have wool. asked him. Yeah. Would okay. have, okay. Yeah, I Thank would you. have, you're welcome. I would have asked him, ¿verdad? Le hubiera pedido. ¿Verdad? Le hubiera pedido que, que se pusiera algo. O sea, el, el, el significado es distinto porque si yo digo, I could have asked, pude haberle pedido. Y si yo digo, I would have asked, right? Lo hubiera pedido. ¿Verdad? Would is correct, the, the answer. Las dos Would? están bien. O sea, las dos okay. posibilidades están correctas, solo que se expresan de manera diferente en español. Okay. Si usted dice, could have asked, pude haberle pedido. Y mm -hmm. would have asked, ¿verdad? Hubiera, le hubiera pedido. Mm -hmm. Okay, teacher. Thanks. You're welcome. Pero sí, las dos están correctas. Um, in number two, it says, John borrowed my car and dented it. When he returned it, he didn't even say anything about it. So, what do you think in number two? He should have told. He Muy should bien. have told. Muy bien, exactly, right? In this case, he should have told you, right? He should have told you, right? Why? Because um, actually that's something serious. I mean, it's your car. What if he had an accident and he dented it, right? He didn't, you know, um, pay for the damage, right? What about the next one? Well... ¿Cómo digo yo no se lo hubiera prestado? Remember that lent es prestar, ¿verdad? Is, is possible he should have lent. I, I, porque sería con I. Ah, yes, yes. I should have lent. No is debí habérselo possible? prestado. Sí, sí, es posible. Okay. Puedo decir, ajá. Okay. Uh -huh. Puedo decir, I shouldn't, porque es negativa, ¿verdad? I shouldn't have lent. Pero okay. también, en mi caso, yo quizás lo diría, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. wouldn't have lent. Ajá. Okay. No lo hubiera prestado. I wouldn't. I La wouldn't. otra es, no debiste haberlo prestado. Y esta es, no, hubiera, no lo hubiera prestado. I wouldn't have lent it, right? Okay. Muy bien. 
excellent. I shouldn't have lent uh, lend it to him or I wouldn't have lent it to him in the first place. He's a terrible driver, right? What about number three? It says, I'm exhausted. Uy, Griselda, creo que se le, se le yes. el lapiz. Espérame. <laughs> Help me, please. <laughs> Bye. Ahí está. Ya lo borré. You're welcome. Um, then it says in number three, I'm exhausted. Mary came over and stayed until 2 a.m. Qué barbaridad. Se puede imaginar una visita hasta las 2 de la mañana. Okay, I'm exhausted, she says, right? So she, aquí estamos dando como suggestions or pieces of advice, ¿verdad? So what do you think? She shouldn't have stayed. Muy bien, ¿verdad? Creo que todos ahí we agree. He should, she shouldn't, I'm sorry, have stayed so late, right? Oh my goodness, right? Yo lo he dicho, okay, here you have a, a pillow and a blanket. Ahí está el sillón. So go to bed and let's let's continue talking tomorrow, ¿verdad? So what about the next one? You? You could have started. <laughs> yes, right? You could have started started yawning. Pudiste haber comenzado ahí a bostezar para que entendiera, ¿verdad? You could have started yawning. Maybe she would have gotten the hint. Tal vez hubiera agarrado ella la la indirecta, right? What about number four, guys? Tom invited me to play, but I ended up paying for, for us both. So me invitaron y yo terminé pagando. ¿Cómo así, verdad? This is, what about here? What about here? I... Shouldn't have paid. Okay, I shouldn't have uh, paid, right? Paid for him, okay? Yo también diría, I wouldn't. Yo no hubiera pagado. I wouldn't have paid, right, for him, okay? So, yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, aquí no les puse las dos posibilidades juntas, ¿verdad? Ahí está. Eh, what about the next one? He... Blah, 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 not invite you if he was short of money. He couldn't, I, have, he invited. couldn't have invited. Pero ahí sería, si yo digo, he couldn't have invited you, no pudo haberte invitado si él sabía que estaba corto de dinero. ¿Puedo decir eso? Creo que se escucha, porque digo. He shouldn't. Ajá. He shouldn't. He shouldn't. No debió, ¿verdad? He shouldn't have invited you oops sorry invited you if he knew or if he was short of money cuando digo estoy corto de dinero es eso to be short of money right so he shouldn't have invited you if he was short of money right Vaya, veo acá que tal vez hay una como necesitamos ahí ver la parte de, bueno, le voy a pasar esta respuesta primero, permítanme. Pero quiero que empiezan aquí. Y creo que esta es de la primera, perdón. Creo que me fui en orden. <coughs> There we go. Bye. Entonces, uh, what I was about to say. Eh, es importante entender cómo lo interpretamos en español para que usted sepa cuál es la que le sirve en la situación. Por ejemplo, si yo digo, chicos, should have, debió haber, debiste haber, ¿verdad? debiste haber anticipado o debió haber anticipado, ¿verdad? Could have. Pudo haber, pudo haber sido, pudo haber llamado, pudo haber eh, avisado, pudo haber eh, uh, pagado, adelantado, ¿verdad? Pudo haber. Y would have es eh, hubiera, 
I would have said, hubiera dicho, hubiera. Ese would have es el hubiera. ¿Ok? Repito, el should have es debió o debiste haber. O debieron haber. ¿Verdad? Debió, eh, debiste haber pensado la situación, ¿verdad? Primero. Could have, pudiste haber, pudo haber, pudieron haber dicho. ¿Verdad? Y would have es la única que este se une con esto y es hubiera. Hubiera dicho, hubiera, hubiera, uh, eh, hubiera enviado, etc. ¿Verdad? Entonces creo que eso tenemos que tomarlo en cuenta para cuando sepa, que sintamos que hay una opción que quizás no, no puedo ocupar. Por ejemplo, acá ustedes me dijeron, por ahí escuché, I, I couldn't have paid for him. Pero si yo digo, no, no, perdón, no fue esta, esta. He couldn't have invited you. He couldn't have invited you. Él no pudo haberte invitado si estaba corto dinero. No puedo usar esa porque en realidad lo que yo quiero decir es que no debió haberlo hecho. ¿Verdad? He shouldn't have invited you if he was short of money. ¿Verdad? Entonces, o por ejemplo acá, I. Ustedes me dijeron, I shouldn't have paid for him. No, yo eh, no debería haber pagado por, por él. O yo no, o no hubiera pagado por él. Entonces, en mi caso, yo diría, I wouldn't have paid for him. Yo no hubiera pagado por él. ¿Verdad? Entonces, ahí para que vayamos revisando, ¿verdad? Eh, ¿Cuál es la que nosotros nos, 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 la opción que nos queda mejor? So, before sí, I continue. Uh -huh. uh, sorry, and... On the platform, I use uh, the number number three. Mm -hmm. I use uh, you could have started young with. Sí, eso. And, uh -huh. and shared uh, about is is not right. Yes, don't worry. En ese caso, recuerde que con respecto a la, a la plataforma, ups, dice que no se puede encontrar. Pueden entrar ustedes a la página, chicos. Yo iba a la plataforma y me sacó. Pueden entrar ustedes. Mm, yes, I, I can. But I try to all, always and no one uh, right. Ah, no, no, it's okay. Don't worry. Eh, ahorita le voy a buscar yo la, la, la respuesta correcta porque en la plataforma solo hay una y ahí depende de, de cuál es la que se está utilizando. Qué extraño. Me sacó. Hmm. Bueno, entonces estamos. Eh, what is the number? ¿Cuál es el número, perdón? Es el mismo que del que hicieron la pregunta hoy. Es la número tres. Es, es la misma. La misma, ¿verdad? Sí. Dice, no, aquí dice, ¿me pueden ayudar en la parte uno de la sección C del, me, del examen? Dice, ¿es esa? La pregunta de WhatsApp es diferente. No, teacher. I, ah. I... Vaya. I... Veamos entonces esta primero y luego me paso a la de WhatsApp. ¿Cuál es la, el número, Miguel? Eh, es la número 3. 3. Point what? ¿Cuál? 3. Punto ¿Qué? ¿Se acuerda? Es en el mid. En el mid. Uh, 3.7. 3.7. 3.7. Ajá, porque el yeah. midterm es, es, es diferente. Medio yeah. Uh -huh. Ajá. Ah, yo, oh. yo hice la pregunta, teacher, del medio del examen. Bye. Ya llegó por ahí. ¿Y qué número es, uh, Miguel? En la número 3.7, ¿qué número es? La de should, should have uh, started joining, esa? ¿O could have started joining? I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. Is. Ah, ok, ok, vaya. For that one, ok, you're going to use this one. Va a usar esta, miren. En la plataforma solo hay una. 
una opción y um, en mi caso, pues yo, uh, si no estoy haciendo el, el ejercicio, tengo opción de elegir, pero en el ejercicio, en ese que usted me dice, I'm exhausted, Mary came over and stayed until 2 a.m. Entonces, para esta la respuesta es, she shouldn't have stayed. And in, in the, in a B, teacher. Ajá, por eso le preguntaba si era la A o la B. Vaya, for that one, eh, that's going to be, you should have started yawning. You should have started yawning. Lo voy a poner aquí en el grupo también, en el, de Zoom, en el chat de Zoom. Ahí está. Pruebe con esas dos y me avisa, ¿de acuerdo? Perfect. Ahora me voy a la parte del midterm exam. Y si usted se fija, si lo doy aquí a enviar, me las toma como correctas. Look. Eh, creo que el problema es que no he estado utilizando, no, yo no he estado utilizando la... La palabra bocetar. Ah, ajá, es cierto, ¿verdad? Porque, ¿y se acuerdan que hablamos también la semana? La este, última clase, teacher. Ajá, la última clase dijimos que esa era la Me única dijo. que yeah. no in, que incluía ajá, el, el complemento Johnny, correcto. Yeah. Es cierto. Muy bien. Entonces, pruebe ahí y nos avisa. Ahora movámonos acá a la parte del midterm exam, ¿ok? que está acá. Dígame, ¿cuál es el número? C, me dijeron por ahí, ¿verdad? Section, section C, uh -huh. no, part, part one. Very good. It says complete the sentences, right? Vale, yes. veamos acá. Give me one moment. Let her see. Complete the sentences with the words below. Just, creo que dice type. Type the word in, no capital letters or periods are needed, ¿verdad? Entonces, dice, solo digite la palabra, no mayúsculas y no puntos, ¿verdad? Entonces, luego tenemos acá different adjectives that we are going to use, right, for that. Now we have a um, ambitious, naive, rebellious, carefree, pragmatic, sophisticated, right? So you have to look for one adjective, right, for you to be able to, um, you shouldn't. Vaya. Solo que cuando estemos en clase, chicos, procuremos que esas preguntas queden en el chat de Zoom, ¿verdad? Porque si no aparece como que, como que no, no estamos haciéndolo acá en clase. Eh, quiero ver por qué no se lo toma así. Creo que aquí se lo, lo, lo copió tal cual lo tengo yo. Ahí se lo copié en el, en el chat porque usted está usando mayúscula y ya no usamos mayúscula porque la oración no la comenzamos con should. Entonces ahí tendría que quitarle la mayúscula. Pruebe con minúscula, Miguel. And should have started yawning. Y me avisa. Ok. Si puede aquí a través del chat de, de, de Zoom. Vaya. Entonces, here it says she's very. So, which adjective do you think, you know, um, better fits here? She's, it says he makes decisions based on practical results instead of ideas or unproved theories. So, cuando usted ve la palabra practical results, ¿con qué podemos hacerlo match acá? Ambitious, naive, rebellious, carefree, pragmatic, or sophisticated. What do you think? Pragmatic. Very good. ¿Verdad? It's pragmatic. Okay, this person is always thinking about practicality, right? Practical results. Muy bien. Until people experience different challenges in life, they are still, what do you think it's the, the adjective when you don't have experience naive. in life? Naive. 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 Naive, mm -hmm. naive. Na naive right? Naive. Mm -hmm. Number three, my son is so, he never seems to worry about anything in life. So what is the adjective? 
when you just have no worries at all? Carefree. Carefree, very good, right? Is a person that is carefree is a person that doesn't worry about anything, right? Audrey is a blah, blah, blah child. She's very difficult to control at school. Rebellious. Rebellious, Rebellious. right? Very good, okay? Rebellious, okay? And over here, ¿también tenemos problemas con esa parte de abajo? ¿O ya la resolvieron? Yes, teacher, no, no problem. Very good. Over here? Yes, no, no problem. Very only, good. Only part, only part one. Ah, ok. Vaya, check, check it out, ¿verdad? Uh, prueben con esas. Ok, and let me know. A mí avisan si le funciona. Porque aquí no me deja, si quieren hagámoslo todo, ¿por qué no me deja ver si están buenas o no? But what do you think, guys? To build a large customer base, a beauty salon, having the latest hairstyles, wants good service, or has to have a good reputation? A, B, or C? Mm -hmm. What do you think? One, two, or three? Has to have a good reputation. Correct, right? A beauty salon has to have a good reputation. Discount stores don't have to advertise much to be attracted in order to attract or by attracting customers. What do you think? In order to attract. In order to attract, okay. Discount stores don't have don't have to advertise much in order to attract customers, okay? What about this one, guys? For a new pizzeria to succeed, to successful, to be success on, a, on my campus, it needs to have 24-hour-a-day delivery service. To succeed. Okay. To succeed, right? On my campus, it needs to have a 24-hour delivery service. Wow, imagine. Part three, instructions. Complete the same the sentences with because, due to, for, or since. Watch for capital letters when a sentence begins, okay? So what about this one? I like the Food Network channel. Because. Because. Because, right, because. Sure. It always has interesting cooking shows, right? Sure. I have problem in number nine. Uh, your is right in right or signs is only signs. Since. Sign seems yes. Mm -hmm. On or seems, he, I am or seems no, so no so in signs so seems seems. Seems. Only mm -hmm. seems. Mm -hmm. Correcto. Es que le dice because due to for or since. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Okay. That's, That's the reason you. why. You're welcome. Okay, since the discount department store opened, there is no place to park on Main Street. You know Starbucks is famous. For. 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 Right? Very good. For. It's coffee, but I love its pastries, right? So, la única que comenzaba oración era since, así que puedo dejar una mayúscula acá. Las demás continuaban la oración, así que se pueden ir en minúsculas. Así que, as you can see, all our answers are correct. Okay? So, please check out uh, the, the ones uh, in, your, in your platform, right? So, you can check it out. Okay, so do you have any okay. other question? Okay, do you have any other question related to the platform? Questions in the platform? No, I should think. Okay, very good. So very interesting, right? Actually, as you were saying before, guys. Uh, I know finish. Pardon, sorry, teacher. Yes. I know finish uh, mid exam. You haven't. No. Oh, it's okay. No hay problema. You can finish okay. it later. Uh -huh. okay. Don't worry. Uh, remember that today is our second class, ¿verdad? Tenemos hoy, mañana y pasado para esta sección 3 y el midterm exam. Okay? And we go, vamos dos semanas más, ¿verdad? Y finalizamos, pues, el, 
el nivel. Así que um, we have still a time. We finish. Quiero ver cinco, diez. Tuvimos acá quince. Ajá, sí. I think that's how it goes. Very good. So, uh, here we have another exercise. Hola. Alguien dijo algo, perdón. No. Okay. Now, this one, guys, this one, it, it depends on you. Okay. But take a look at here. It says word power reactions. Okay. Reactions are the way, you know, um, people uh, react to certain things, right? So it says Megan's boyfriend forgot her birthday. So how does she react? Match its reaction with the best example. So we have different, um, different reactions. We have an assumption, a criticism, a demand, an excuse, a prediction, a suggestion, a suspicion, and a warning. Okay, so this exercise, probably what I'm going to do, right, it's going to, um, is that I'm going to assign it as homework. Okay, so you can look for the meaning of the words that you don't know, and we can check it out uh, tomorrow, right? Voy a responder acá, permítanme. Dígame, Elizabeth. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. What does warming mean? Es una advertencia. Thank you. You're welcome. Espera, me solo voy a responder este mensaje. Ahí está. Okay. So, and then we're going to continue, you know, with the rest of the information. Uh, siempre revisen el manual porque en el manual, ¿verdad? Tienen más material. Por ejemplo, este ya lo vimos, que es el de Blue Lights of Silver Cliff. A mí me gustó este reading. And, and then we, we move, you know, to the next part, okay? And that is going to be section four, right? Así de que still you have uh, some... Eh, some activities. Now, ¿qué más, ¿qué más les voy a pedir, chicos? Bueno, related to this, um, to this structure, I want you to please bring examples. Please bring um, examples like this, four or five examples, okay? Eh, for you to be able to, um, to give your own sentences, para que ustedes puedan dar sus propios ejemplos, ¿verdad? Eh, Miguel, ¿pudo, ¿pudo ingresar la de, la de should have started joining? Yes, sure, I can. Pudo, y era minúscula, ¿verdad? Eh, sí, de hecho, no fui yo quien eh, hizo el comentario. Ah, perdón, no sé quién, quién fue, pero, ay, que como no están con nombres. This is my question, Madeline. Ah, ok, Madeline. Pero lo intentó con minúscula. Yes, uh, I tried uh, to, 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 I'm sorry, to, how do you say intentos? No intentos. Tries or to attempts. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, to twice. So, and capital letter, it's correct in my case. Ah, okay. Es que estaba preguntando por este que me acaban de poner. Este de acá. No sé, como no tiene nombre, no sé quién, quién me mandó este. ¿Verdad? Yo, yo, yo. Ah, ok. Entonces solamente hay que arreglar aquí que es minúscula, la S. Eso es todo. ¿Verdad? That's I, it. I don't know what happened and I try with con letra mayúscula y con letra minúscula. Ajá. Primero lo hice con letra mayúscula y me dio error. Después lo hice con letra minúscula y me volvió a dar error. Lo volví a hacer con la mayúscula y me salió correcto. Really? Sounds yeah. so weird. Okay, but there I see, right? Sí. Vaya, excellent. Okay, guys, so um, that's what we what we are going to do tomorrow. Number one, you have this uh, homework assignment, these phrases, I mean, this uh, matching exercise. Look for the meaning of the words that you don't know, right? And number two, 
please bring your examples about giving opinions and giving advice, okay? Four examples or five examples would be perfect, okay? And tomorrow we are going to share them during the class, okay? Right now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to mention the names of the people that didn't reply before, okay? Pero en mientras tanto, si tienen alguna pregunta, me avisan, please. Veamos. Carlos Roberto Domínguez, ¿está o no está? Present, teacher. Yes, present. Gracias. Eh, Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Present, teacher. Thank you. Y Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina. No está. Permita. Ah, pero pero si había estado bien, bueno, no sé, ha faltado en tres ocasiones. Bueno, anyways, so, well, guys, that's going to be it for today. I would like to thank you very much for joining, okay, okay. and let's meet tomorrow, okay? Have a Good wonderful night, night. Good night, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, teachers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye. Bye, bye, teacher. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. See you tomorrow. Have bye. a nice night. Thank you. Likewise, guys. See you tomorrow.